Sharpen the knives, polish the pans, it's MasterChef time. 20 brand new celebrities eager to impress in the MasterChef kitchen. I literally can't wait. I'm so excited to be cooking it. So excited. Do they know the difference between a ladle and a microphone? A tap shoe and a tong? We're about to find out. If I get past the first round, I think that's a victory. <laughs> I don't think there's a level to describe just how bad I am. <laughs> who can sizzle and shine, and who might land themselves in hot water? These five celebrities are taking on the challenge to become the next MasterChef champion. But at the end of today, only the best cooks will make it through. I am super excited, super nervous. I'm starting to sweat, like dripping like an egg sandwich. <laughs> Things like boxing, when the bell goes, I'll get into the zone. You know, if I can do that, I think I've won. I haven't placed a bet on myself. Uh, it's just don't make yourself look like a fool. I think I'm a bit erratic. It'll be interesting to see what I do by that workstation that you've uh, prepared for me. <laughs> One of the things I've always hated about acting is the rehearsals. I just want to get in there and get going. Oh, God. I don't want to go in. <laughs> I feel so grown up. <laughs> Have you ever worn an apron? No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Celebrity MasterChef. You know, you are our last batch of celebrities. We know what the standard is. You may well reach it. You may well surpass it. Straight down to business. This is your first task on MasterChef. And as a hint to that first task, there is a cloth on your bench. Oh! OK. It's a pestle and mortar, isn't it? That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Smashing it! Hey. <laughs> we want from you five celebs a curry. Fluffy rice, a bread, and a little side with it. With any of these ingredients behind Greg and I. You've got 50 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. To make their curries, the celebrities have a selection of dried spices, chilies, and fresh herbs, as well as a range of meat, fish, fruit, and vegetables to choose from. Curry is a flavoured dish with lots of spice, which has got a little bit of chilli in the background, and it's served with rice. What are you making? I haven't got a clue. Perfect, free-flowing, fragrant rice, please. That's what they've got to get right, in my opinion. Great rice and spiced food. The extent of my curry knowledge is just like maybe it's one on a Sunday night from the takeaway. Can I take the whole vinegar? Yeah. I'm just going to make it up as I go along. <laughs> Actor Adam Woodyatt is no stranger to small screen kitchens. As Ian Beale in BBC One's EastEnders for over 30 years, he's run a chippy, a cafe and a restaurant. I'm literally one of the only people who survived the whole time. There's been lots of deaths in that square, but um, they haven't got me yet. I've entered because I love the programme. I've been trying to get in there for years, but just haven't been able to make it work. I would say I'm probably going to be quite messy. I don't know. I'll see how it goes, but I can't wait. Adam, you must be one of the most recognisable faces in Britain. Why are you here? Because I love food. How good I'm at cooking it, I have no idea, because I don't do a lot of cooking. Um, I do a lot of eating. Hang on a minute. In Albert Square, you've owned a cafe. Yeah, I know, but props boys do a wonderful job. I'm only as good a chef as the props boy of that day. Adam. Yeah? Do you like a curry? I love eating them. Adam is making us a curry of prawns. He's got some tomatoes roasting in the oven to make the sauce. Fantastic. 
What Adam's got to do is make sure there's not too much tomato to spice. You've had 10 minutes, 40 minutes left. Ah! Flies, doesn't it? Legendary DJ and music producer Judge Jules's cooking is inspired by his global travels. DJing has taken me probably five million miles worth of flights to different far-flung destinations, and I've tried to dive into the cuisine wherever I've gone to. My particular penchant is for Asian, but I just love everything that the locals would love. You're Judge Jules, right? But I'm not really a judge, I should point out, but I am a qualified lawyer as well as being a DJ. Any links between law, music and cooking? No. Me uncle. Who's your uncle? Rick Stein. No way. Yeah. Do you know, he used to be a DJ as well, so there's a bit of a weird synergy thing going on here. Jules has gone straight for the flavours of Thailand, and he's made his own curry paste with some monkfish. He's got coconut milk, so therefore it should be sweet, it should be spicy, it should be smoky, and it should be fish that's cooked absolutely perfectly. Reality star Vicky Patterson once worked as a waitress before finding fame on TV show Geordie Shaw. I'm like 31 now and I went to uni when I was 18. I sort of did a bit of cooking there, fajitas for the lasses or like a shepherd's pie. Maybe it's a chilli, I do a canny chilli. Vicky, you okay? No. What's the matter? I'm really hot and I'm really stressed out. I've got the chicken and the onions in. I don't know how to make, like, the body of the curry, like, the sauce. Do you cook, Vicky? No, I'm hoping. Learn some skills here. Find a fella. Kids. Hello, Delia. Vicky is running around like a kangaroo loose in the top paddock. I mean, she is all over the place. Ah, I panicked, I panicked, I panicked. What's the worst that could happen, eh? If Vicky can just get the curry made, I'll be very, very happy. Little bits of chicken thigh meat with lots and lots of chilli and some ginger. She's got some tomatoes now and some stock to make a sauce. Let's see what happens. Oh, my God! Nobody... Nobody saw that. Polish-born Thomas Schaffernacker is best known as a BBC weather forecaster. I will use ingredients that most people wouldn't touch, or at least combinations. So I will throw raisins with tuna, some cashew nuts. So I do try to experiment a lot with, with my food, and quite often it ends up actually being really decent, or at least I think so. Tomasz, do you do a bit of cooking? I do love Asian flavours, and that's probably the type of cooking that I'm most familiar with. So it, it'll be sea bass with a fragrant Southeast Asian sauce. From a flavour point of view, I'm happy with the sauce so far. I don't know whether I'm cheating or not by not doing a proper curry. It's going to be something like a curry. Sea bass, which has been dressed with a spicy sauce. That's not a curry, that's a dressed piece of fish. <gasps> Oh! Damn it! Former boxing manager and promoter Kelly Maloney's love of food started at an early age. My mum was um, a typical Irish cook. Lots of stews, boiled bacon and cabbage, and now and again, uh, spam fritters. And I come from a competitive world of boxing, so I'm not here to go out in the first round. Now, you've looked after some championship boxers. That's easier than cooking, I can assure you. But you never used to cook with, with the boxers? No, I never cooked. Yeah, we had the world heavyweight champion. We didn't cook. We had chefs in. We were spoiled. <laughs> right, what about a curry? You must have had a few takeaway curries. Yeah, I, I've had takeaway curry, um, but I've never made one. So there's a big difference in making a curry and actually going in the shop and just buying one. Kelly has put into a pot a load of dried spices. She's put some stock in there with a whole chicken thigh. But that chicken thigh is going to cook all the way through to the bone without drying out. Some breads are on. I think we're going to be all right. You've got 10 minutes. Use it wisely. You couldn't even get a curry delivered in that time. That's hot. Or 
have some cucumber. Just take me like to go on. <laughs> Get it on a plate. You've got about 30 seconds. Get it on a plate. Big spoon, big spoon, big spoon. If you were a big spoon, where would you be? Right, here we go. Kelly, quick, quick, quick. Two more spoonfuls and we've got to call it. We've got to call it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. Time's up. Stop. Stop. I would eat that. We don't even know if the chicken's cooked yet. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Tomash, curry time, please, sir. Weatherman Tomash has made sea bass topped with a red onion, cashew nut, and ginger spiced sauce. Served with spiced broccoli, plain rice, flatbread, and a side of mango and cashew nuts. <laughs> there is no way you could squeeze this dish into the category of curry. But I have to admire some of the skill you showed here. Your fish is cooked perfectly. I like that onion relish thing you put across the top. These flatbreads are really thin and really well made. I'm not a fan of warm mango and cashew nuts with lime juice. However, your flavours on that fish are fab. Your rice is absolutely perfect. But it's not really a curry. No. You know? I've never done a curry before. Well, I haven't done one here either. No. <laughs> <laughs> I completely did not follow the brief, and I think it's only halfway through that I realised that I'm not actually making a curry. EastEnders star Adam has made a prawn, tomato, and coconut curry with a chapati, brown rice, and a cucumber and mint raita. Oh, mate. That rice is not cooked. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I tried some. <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> but I think you may have a really good palate. I honestly really like the curry you've made me. It starts off sweet and it has a creeping heat. And it's beautiful with the gentle crunch of those prawns. I really like this. Thank you. Love the fact you roasted tomatoes. Loved all the spices you put into it. There's lots of chilli in the background. Cumin, coriander, curry paste, scarum masala, perfectly cooked prawns across the top, and a bread which is tasty. I'll forgive you, Rice. Good job. I knew me rice was rubbish. I'm just didn't like me curry. Former boxing promoter Kelly chose the chicken to make a curry with okra, carrot, and red peppers. She's also made saffron rice, flatbreads, and a side dish of spiced cauliflower, mushrooms, and onion. Careful. Hello. The flavour of your curry sauce is incredible. I mean, mega, mega chilli. I like very spicy food. And if that's what you wanted, fine. It's a little hot for me. Your chicken, it's cooked nicely. Saffron rice is a lovely idea, but your rice isn't cooked. Kelly, not completely problem-free. However, I love your curry. There's smokiness of coriander, sweet carrots running all the way through, and thank goodness there is sweet carrot because you need the relief from the amount of chilli that's in there. It's really hot. <laughs> a tear's come into his eyes <laughs> eating that hot curry, but John liked it. I got a little bit of praise, so that's given me a bit of encouragement for the next challenge. At least the chicken was cooked. I smashed it, babe. Well, that was so good. Everyone's <laughs> Here we go. DJ Judge Jules has made a Thai monkfish curry with okra, a side of broccoli, shiitake mushrooms and pak choy, plain rice and a flatbread. That's a pretty good Thai curry. Love the fact there's lots and lots of coriander and chilli and lime leaves. Your rice is overcooked.
but you've got some really nice ideas and I think you've got a decent palate. Thank you. Your fish is beautifully cooked. It definitely shows a fair amount of knowledge. It's not perfect, but its flavours are sound. Thank you. You think when you reach a certain age, you've done everything and experienced all, but that was something totally new, totally fresh. Overall, really pleased. Last up is reality star Vicky, who's made a chicken curry served with plain rice, wholemeal flatbreads, and a cucumber and mint writer. Your breads are absolutely lovely. Are you joking? No, I'm not joking. They're lovely and flaky. They are absolutely great. Your rice is cooked all the way through. Your writer, lots of mint, lots of yoghurt, fab. Your curry is not really curry. No, I know. It's more of a chicken casserole. You need spice and you need chilli. Well-cooked chicken, well-made bread, nice writer, cooked rice. Vicky, I am nothing short of amazed. <laughs> Honestly, you and me both. I feel on cloud nine after that critique from the lads. They're proper softies, aren't they? They loved me bread. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to poison them. Absolutely buzzing with that. We loved your enthusiasm in this round. You're going to need lots of energy in the next round because we are unleashing you on the paying public. <laughs> <laughs> What, already? <laughs> yep, already. <laughs> it's day two. And the five celebrities have been split into two groups. They're about to have their first restaurant experience. Jules, Kelly and Vicky will be cooking at Vivi Restaurant in the West End of London. It's really fancy. Okay. So, so you've been here before? No, but it just looks nice. Vivi celebrates the best of British cuisine with a nod to the 60s. Under the guidance of executive chef, Vicky Jeffries miller What we've tried to do is to take you back to where you remember your prawn cocktails, where you've remembered your chicken Kiev, where you've remembered your duck a la and your soufflés and stuff like that. So hopefully when you come, you can have some of those classic dishes with a modern twist. Hi, Vicky. Hi, oh, hi. Wow. Yes. I'm Vicky. And Hi, Vicky. Jules, how Jules, are you? Jules, lovely to meet you. During service, I need you focused. I need you to listen, and I need you to respond and get those dishes up to the past nice and hot, nice and seasoned, and then we'll send it away to those guests, and hopefully we'll have a great experience. You make it sound so easy, Vicky. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay. Let's take you through, and then you can meet the team. <laughs> Kelly will be in charge of a starter. Now I feel like a chef. <laughs> a cheese souffle, which will be baked once in prep and a second time during service. OK, this is your pre-made souffle that you're making. We're going to demold it and just pop it through the oven to warmer. Now, with the amount of orders you're going to have on, you're going to have to think about the service. So, number one service, number two, number three, number four, number five... It's like a military operation. It is operation. like a military operation. While the souffle bakes, Kelly will have just minutes to make a perfectly smooth Mornay cheese sauce. I've got to make that as well. This one's also got to be made. You sell a lot of it. We do sell a lot, yeah. Ooh. And heat a red pepper and onion mix. Timing's the biggest thing. The movement of the stove, how you're putting your Mornay sauce on, making sure your peppers are not catching, there's a lot of that going to go on to. We're going to place it into the middle of our white dish here, OK? They're going to have to be up and down to the stove, so they've got to understand that if that souffle, if it starts to drop, that's it gone. You're going to have to throw it away and start again. In the second heat, it's puffed up a bit. It's got a yeah. lovely golden brown colour on there. And then for the final touches, we're going to take our Mornay sauce, pour it nicely over the top of your souffle. Kelly will have to finish the dish by lightly browning the Mornay cheese sauce. Look at that. It's starting to go brown on you, yeah? Grab a few small bits of parsley, drop it over the top, and then off it goes to the guests. OK. Kelly? Well, I, hope my, I hope mine is as good as that. You'll be oh, fine, oh. you'll be fine. I'm terrified of this. While Kelly gets the souffles on for the first bake, Vicky is tackling a salmon main course. <laughs> 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 
The salmon is served on wilted spinach with potatoes cooked in a butter emulsion and a hollandaise sauce. Challenges with the salmon, not overcooking that skin. You're going to need to keep it crispy but not black. What you want to do is take it on its side. Sounds nice. Okay. Just get rid of that raw element on that salmon. You want, like, salmon, not sushi. You want salmon, not sushi. Got Fair it. shout. As well as perfectly cooking the salmon, Vicky will need to bring together the other elements. They've got to make sure that potatoes are warm all the way through. You don't want to bite into a potato and find it cold in the middle. Right, a bit of emulsion, you see that? They drop that in. Ooh. You see, that's just coated nicely. Nice. That is literally your spinach done. So, to plate up your potatoes. Oh, that looks good, if you, if you feel that now... Am I all right to go, yeah? Yeah, OK, that's, that's what perfect. I want. There you go, Vicky. Well, that looks amazing. If you can do that for every check, they'll be happy. Don't get us wrong, probably making one of these with a couple of hours, yeah, that's simple, but walloping out 15 to 20 in, like, a short space of time for angry lunchtime diners, I'm sweating just standing here thinking about it. I'm just deboning this fish. It's actually like plucking your eyebrows, it's not that bad. Across the kitchen, Jules is prepping duck for a main course, which he will have to cook two different ways. The first element is a duck breast. Now, we're going to pop that straight onto our griddle. You want about seven minutes on that skin. It's going to render that skin down and give you a beautiful, crispy skin. Your second element is the duck leg. Give it four or five minutes. Nice, crispy skin again. And do we use the timer when we're doing that? I can give you a timer for that, yeah, no problem. <laughs> the duck dish, you need focus. You need to be methodical. You're going to get a beautiful caramelisation on that. You need to make sure that you take it off the stove before it starts to go black on you. We've got some confit orange. There is a lot of elements going on that plate. On deep. Taking the duck, and then it's going to sit just around there. The duck and on are served with a classic orange sauce. His service is going to be very, very tight. A few dishes on the pass for that, and uh, they're going to feel it. And then a small ploosh of watercress just over the top. OK, Jules, that's what we're expecting every single time when you send it up. Oh, dear. Tough challenge. Sounds very simple, but I think you'd need to have been doing this for a while to get it right without uh, misadventure and misfortune. Further east in the city of London, Adam and Tomash will be cooking at Lino, where modern innovative dishes are served under the guidance of head chef Richard Falk. It's not so much about process as it is about accuracy and diligence of what you're doing. I'm looking forward to it being challenging for them. I'm looking forward to hopefully that they'll learn a new skill that they can take away. Right, Thomas. Uh, you're going to be doing the mackerel dish today. OK. So, so we're going to brush the skin of the fish with a little bit of oil. The mackerel is cooked over a live flame on a Japanese rabata. Cooking on the rabata requires a bit of care and attention. We're going to take it to just cooked. If it's over, it can feel powdery, it can feel a little bit kind of like dry. Just making sure that you preserve the skin, it doesn't get burnt to bits on the grill, it doesn't break, it just requires a bit of attention to detail. So we just take this off now. Right. So underneath, we've still got that sort of translucency. This is how we're going to plate the mackerel. We've got some pickled cucumbers here. And then just with our oyster mayonnaise. Presentation, it's really important that all of the effort you've put in before isn't wasted by sloppily throwing things on a plate. And then just onto our plate. That looks really nice. Do you know what? I love the simplicity of it? It's so elegant. I love it. Tom Ash's first job is to delicately fillet the mackerel. Oh, so I've messed it up for you now. That's all right. No, we'll, we'll make something of him later. So let's try again. <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult than it looks, for sure. I just can't get it off the bone as perfectly as, as it looks. I think I've, oh, sh I've messed it up again. Oh, no, he's going to kill me. <laughs> While Tomash struggles filleting the mackerel, 
Adam is butchering pork for his dish. Before transferring the pork chop onto the grill, the fat must first be rendered. Once we've rendered the fat, we just have a glaze here made of reduced apple juice and some apple vinegar. The obvious pitfall with pork is just cooking it to bits. You know, don't char the flesh beyond recognition. So it's understanding that you have to move your meat around, you have to change its position to get an even cook. Once cooked, Adam's next challenge will be to quickly remove the meat from the bone. And then just into sort of quite big chunks. Yeah. This is how you're going to be plating up. The pork chop is served with an onion and cabbage puree and braised cabbage topped with crispy bacon and chives. Oh, they smell nice. Yeah. Then your wedge of cabbage. Yeah. And this is just some smoked pork fat, pork stock. Pocky dogs. Sure. I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be fun. The fact that people are going to be eating and paying for the food that we cook um, is slightly terrifying because we can actually see them. It's midday, and in the West End, lunch service is about to begin. Right, guys, on order. Table 53, we've now got two covers on that table. It is one souffle, main course, one duck a la orange. Jules, get it out. Two salmon vicks, off you ah! go. Three salmon, Vicky, you are gonna get it. What the hell, that's six salmon! What the fish-loving hell? While Vicky begins to prep her six salmon, Jules gets on with the first of his duck orders. Tiny bit of oil down, that's it, not too much. Drop it on, fantastic. Okay, just leave it go, let it go. Jules, you've got one more on order, ladder, right? That's the second one here. And yeah, one bolivon, no, you've got two on order total. Straight out the gate. Right, Vicky, how are you doing? I'm a bit overwhelmed with the six salmon straight away, like. That's OK, no problem. Obviously, good. I might get my potatoes on, what do you, you can get your potatoes on, that's right. Your potatoes in, all of them, and you go. Try not to throw them into the emulsion. Place oh. them nicely. OK, guys, on order, we've got two covers, two souffle, please. Kelly also has multiple orders for her twice-baked souffle. Just make sure you've got your peppers hot. Got them in it. That's it, well done. It's the pressure getting them ready on time. It's not easy, I can assure you, it's not easy. She needs to move quickly, juggling a number of elements, but at the same time, plating with precision. Make sure that Mornay sauce is nice and hot. I don't want cold Mornay sauce going, OK? No, no. Go on, don't be shy. No, more, 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 more. OK, you're going to have to go a bit quicker if you get a few more orders on. Start to brown them up. Eh, hey, now you're cooking with gas. Not too black on the top, Kelly. Make sure you go all the way around, yeah? Well done. That looks great. OK, that's lovely. Off you go, guys, please. Three covers, three souffle, Kelly. Get them in. All right, this is hard work. I think boxing's easier. I've got to be honest. Over on the duck section, Jules is also snowed under. I've got six on the go right now. It's as hectic as I expected. Let's see what the diners have to say, but I hope they will be satisfied. He has to get the cooking of both duck elements and the endive spot on. OK, so what are we... right, that is, that's slightly too dark. That yeah. one's lovely. Yeah. The others you're going to have to do again. Yeah. You've got three minutes to get those sorted, OK? While Jules regroups and recooks his endives, it's now over to Vicky to plate the first two of her six salmon on order. Never, ever done this before. Like, can't even make a fry up. Make sure my beans are hot at the same time as my bacon. Looks good, buddy. Thank you, babe. Well done. Just watch that. It's not going to keep going yet. Yeah. With Chef satisfied the salmon is up to restaurant standard, Vicky must now ensure each plate is identical. Come on, Vicky, bring it up, bring it up. Two salmon. Looks good. Thank you very much, Chef. Looks good, Vic. Well done. Thank you. Pretty stressful. It's super difficult, but a proper adrenaline rush. And there's so much to remember all the time. Having recooked his endive, Jules now has to get all seven elements of his duck dish plated. Endive first, Chef. Endive first. Sure. That's gently, gently. Ooh. Right, OK, what was next? 
It was. Duck legs. Duck legs on. Duck legs on. Duck legs on. Okay, that's it. Perfect. Right now you want your breast, so put the breast on the tray. It's a bit like teaching children. By the time you've taught them the 900th time, they'll get it right. But well, uh... yeah. Plating is a little bit less to be desired, to be fair. We're getting there. We are getting there. Then give me a month and I might have it all sorted. Okay, Jules, watch your duck under there. Right. We don't want it overcooking. Just pop it underneath. Yep. Over in the city, service is also underway. All right, check on one mackerel, one tartar, one burrata. Yep, coming up, chef. All right, check on one tartar, one mackerel. Okay. Tomash has to master the hot coals of the rabata grill to cook his first two mackerel. We're just going to make sure they cook nice and evenly, so let's just leave these there for a couple of minutes just to blister up. I thought I was supposed to know what two minutes feels like. I know what two minutes feels like on the weather, but I don't know what it feels like on here. Across the kitchen, Adam's also off the blocks. Yeah, that's hot. Imagine your barbecue at home, how hot that gets and then quadruple it easily. It's very, very hot. The skin's coming off. It's getting stuck to the... The skin's coming off. I feel like these might have stuck. So let, let's, let's go grab two more, please. The metal bars weren't hot enough. And, and once the skin comes off, um, you can't serve it because it looks messy. This is not as easy as I thought. I mean, it just looks like a fillet on the grill, but it's got to be time dry. You've got to get the skin a certain way. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't move these just yet. Yeah, not yet. Okay, not done yet. And the customers are waiting. With his pork cooked and all other elements ready, Adam can begin the intricate plating. You get a little bit neater, and then just a little bit further to the right, please. All right, so three cabbages on. His last job is to precisely carve the pork meat from the bone. All the cooking is nice. We just need to get a little bit quicker. I know, it's getting this bone out. It yeah. is. It'd be so much easier if we were serving them on the bone. OK, fine. That's pretty good. I need a sauce over the top, please. OK, let's go. Let's just watch our positioning of the cabbage a little okay. bit further right, OK? Service, please. Table one. Right, guys, let's go now to pork. On mackerel duty, Tomash is finally ready to plate his first two orders. This one's very good. This one could have done with a little bit more. But it's all right. We're happy. Let's go. I like doing this. Something really satisfying about doing this one. A little, a little bit of salt. Bring it in a little bit tighter. Yeah, OK, good. Right, let's go. Service, please. Phew. So my first two dishes done. That took ages. I mean, that probably took five times longer than it should have done. Back in the West End, service is in full swing. And then off you go, and this gentleman will take it away for you. Table 53, please. And Kelly is swamped with orders. Three covers, three souffle, Kelly, get them in. OK, on order, you've got another table. Three guests, two Cornish crab and one souffle. Kelly, in the oven, please, young lady. I think I'm the busiest. I've done about 10 so far. I actually like a little bit of pressure. Three souffle. OK, service, please. You are doing a cracking job, girl. Maybe you should give up your day job. <laughs> Vicky's salmon dish is also in high demand. Nice job, Vicky, nice job. Thanks, Vic. I need those three salmon up now, now, please. No problem, Chef. It's definitely not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but I feel like I'm sort of getting a bit of a flow going. That's it, nice glaze on that duck leg. Well done. Jules is managing to get all his elements of his duck dish cooked, but he's still struggling with finesse. One day I'll get you to cut the duck properly. Ah, uh, one day, one day over the rainbow. Ooh. Right, now, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. Again, remember, needs to be the same every single time, OK? You're all right with your cooking. You're all fingers and thumbs. 
Service is drawing to a close. Kelly, how are you looking on that souffle? 140, chef. Fantastic. And Kelly's on her last cheese souffle order. Kelly, you can come again. That's a great job. Just put some more sauce in that pan. Get it warm and get it sent now, please. And then on the pass, and then I'd like you to clean your section down. You've done a great job. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, chef. I used to think boxing promoting was pressurised till I came in this kitchen today. Hopefully I'll learn some things that'll get me through to the final. Vicky is also continuing to win the admiration of the chef. How long are that salmon, Vix? Uh, about two, no, less than two minutes. Vicky, you've nailed it. I'll tell you what, sack the day job. <laughs> we'll give you a job. I haven't tried it yet, Vic. OK, Vic's your last one. Let's make it good. Two salmon there, chef. One point. Wait, one up, please. Wait, coming up. Salmon there, chef. Aye, good girl. Well done. Thank you. Service, please. Only like saying if you can't handle the heat. Never really applied to me before. OK, that's three ducks away now, Jules, and that is your final check. Thank you, sir. Jules has one last chance to nail the presentation. Remember where it goes? Wonderful. Watercrest, watercrest, watercrest. Well done, Jules. That's much, much better plating up. I haven't had to play with that plate. Service, please. Beautiful, well done. Thank you very much. Clean down your section. Thank well you, done. Chef. Will do. So tough. It's the chaos of it all. Too many plates to spin, lots of things to think about, but a fantastic experience that will live with me forever. Across town, there's been no let up for Adam and Tomash. Two mackerels. One mackerel, follow pork, pumpkin, celeriac. OK, two more mackerel, please. Fast pace or what? With the orders flooding in, Tomash needs to juggle cooking on the rabata and plating at the same time. It is absolutely relentless. It's like a storm in the kitchen. Despite the pace and pressure of a busy service, standards can't slip. We're just going to replate this one again. You just see, we're like, we haven't drained our pickles nicely. Can we not just use, the, use no. a little towel? No, let's get it again, please. OK. While Tomash replates, over on the pork dish, Adam is also feeling the pressure. Adam? Yeah? In two minutes, you're going to give me two pork? Yep. Yeah, and then in seven minutes, you're going to give me three pork. Yes? Yep. Yes? He's trying to keep track of which pork chops which. It's one, two, three, they went in close together. Then there was one on its own, then there's those three that were just put in there. There's eight on at the moment. I really hope nobody else orders pork. So let's, let's get these two. One and two. Under the sheer weight of orders, Adam has got his timings wrong. That's blushing. Chef, that's under. Under, under? Under. Do you want to check one of your other ones, please? Huh? Can we, use, can we take from this one and see how he is? Yeah, I'll take that. Adam can't afford to slow things down any further. Why has this one got the worst bone of the lot? While over on the mackerel, Tom Ash is looking to finish with a flourish. Much better, thank you. Oh, thank you. Service. OK, table nine, please. This is my last mackerel, and it is perfecto. Yep. Yep. Nice, good. Mackerel! I could carry on. Yeah, I could do a few more. Definitely. It just went just like that, in a flash, like a lightning bolt. Gone. Adam is nearing the end of his service and wants to go out on a high. Pork on, sauce over. Chef, is that OK? Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's enough sauce, isn't it? Yep. Service, please. Amazing. You did really well. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Thank you, sir. I loved it. I loved every second of that. Even when it was manic, it was, it was still good fun. After you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, that's good.
Welcome back. Now, of course, you have got the opportunity to cook your own food. Do yourself proud. It's a chance to show off. At the end of this, one of you will be leaving us. Ladies and gentlemen, one plate, one hour. Let's cook. I'm going to try and be a little bit more cool today, a little bit calmer under pressure. Take some of the Vicky from yesterday's kitchen and put it into the Master Chef one. And hopefully not just fall apart like a saggy jelly. <laughs> Vicky, are you enjoying yourself? <laughs> I think I've been bitten by the bug. I had a really nice day in the kitchen. Sort of being in that professional environment spurred us on. Tell me what you're making for us, please. Fillet steak, uh, potato puree with spring onions, peppercorn sauce and sautéed garlic spinach. Is this a dish that you would like to eat yourself? I love to eat it, yeah. It's really nice. It's simple flavours, it's, like, good food. Uh, it's perfect with a glass of red. I'm good to go. <laughs> Vicky's got a fill of beef. She's seasoned it with salt, pepper, and thyme and rosemary. Mashed potato flavoured with spare onion, called champ. Got to be buttery, got to be creamy. She's serving the whole thing with a peppercorn sauce. A bit of fire, please, but not too much fire. That's a peppercorn sauce. My dish today is hot smoked salmon on a bed of spinach and nutmeg, accompanied by salmon mousse in a pasta roll with Bourbon ginger sauce. This is master chef, so you've got to have a bit of talent, can't you? I'd rather just do sausage and eggs, but that won't get me through, will it? This is technical stuff. Why something so complex? Yeah, I live a lot in Portugal, so I, I barbecue a lot, and I didn't think you'd let me bring a barbecue in here, so I decided I would smoke the dish. This is a tough competition. Are you getting support at home? All I get from my daughters is don't get out in the first round <laughs> and last night I practiced my dish and I messed up the sauce and I gave it to my dogs and they were still alive this morning so I know I know the dish works the salmon mousse is really really complicated because if she over blends it it can split which she's then going to put inside pasta which she's making to make cannelloni it's going to be served with some hot smoked salmon if it's over smoked it becomes bitter and then she's going to serve the whole lot with a ginger beurre blanc. In the hands of a great chef, it could be fantastic. In Kelly's hands, I hope it's going to be OK. I'm pretty confident I can pull these dishes off. The question is how good my competitors are. And it's funny, we've got really quite close, the five of us, but now one of us is going, and I guess it's the cutthroat stage of MasterChef. Jules, you have got a ton of ingredients. You seem to have twice as many ingredients as anybody else. Well, I'm doing salt and pepper squid, but that's a bit boring on its own. So I'm doing like a kind of Thai egg and prawn minced vegetable combo, kind of mixture of Asian flavours, the wasabi mayonnaise, a bit of Thai on the prawns, all thrown in together is the way I like it. I don't think we need to be all about national boundaries. Just take the bits of the cuisines you like and throw them together and see what happens. Salt and pepper squid. Very, very classic. White peppercorns with salt mixed together with a starch. Got to be deep fried really quickly so that it gets a crispy outside. Then we've got egg, prawns, chilli sauce, asparagus and kale all mixed together. Sort of Chinesey scrambled eggs mixture. I don't know how that works. I find that quite fascinating. This competition, it is definitely bringing out the creative side. This is giving me a chance to sort of be a bit more showy and play around. I'm like a kid in the sweet shop. You all right, bud? I am. Are you OK? It's just trying to get everything done in the time. That's the, that's the issue. Have you worked out the timings of this dish at home? No. Oh, Adam, really? I didn't, just literally didn't have time. What are you making, please? Right, pan-seared tenderloin of Iberico pork with parsnip puree, parsnip crisp, roast parsnip and a carrot and ginger sauce, which I've got to keep my eye on. You're going to make this look all smart, aren't you, and posh? Well, I have spent a lot of time on Instagram looking at other people's plates. 
Adam is going with pork and parsnips. Great combination. The Iberico pork can be served pink, but it needs to have a little bit of colour on the outside. That parsnip puree needs to be velvety smooth. We've also got a carrot and ginger sauce. You've got to make sure it's properly reduced, otherwise it's just watery and liquid. You have just 25 minutes left, all right? Less than half an hour, please. I've never thought about food so much before. I go out for a run, and the next thing I know, I'm coming back with, with some coriander. So food has completely and utterly taken over my life, yeah. What, what, are, we, what are we doing with this, my friend? I'm going to be serving that with my meal because it's a Polish dish, and Poles like vodka. What's your dish? Pierogi, which are Polish dumplings stuffed with mushrooms, and there's going to be a side of beetroot. I remember both my grandmothers used to do this, traditionally done during Christmas, but to be honest, pierogi are so popular in Poland, they do it all year round. And that side of beetroot seems to be a winner each time I do it. Tomasz, you've sold it to me, mate. Tomasz is cooking pierogi. Inside should be mushrooms, which are really, really well seasoned, and they're going to be cooked very, very well. On the side of that, he's doing steamed beetroot, seasoning with some vinegar, and then also some sultanas. Interesting. It isn't the most complex dish in the world, however, it could be delicious. You have only 15 minutes left. You have got just 60 seconds. Last touches, final touches. Quick, 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 quick. Come on. Okay, that's it. Stop. Stop. Now oh, that looks so nice. Yeah, I'd like to eat that. This little steak going on? I'd like to eat that. Yeah, love that. <laughs> The presentation is, is really good. Everyone looks so good. Well done. Kelly, would you? Kelly has made hot smoked salmon with grated lime, served on spinach with nutmeg, with salmon mousse filled cannelloni, and ginger and saffron beurre blanc. It looks clean, it looks crisp, it looks inviting. It's a pretty plate. That's what it tastes like, though. <laughs> Your mousse is a little dry. It should be a little bit loose, a little bit wetter, and your pasta's a little thick. That's my only complaint on there. I love the smoky, almost bitterness through the salmon. Your sauce is divine. You've attempted some real technically challenging things here. Your flavour combinations are really good. I love the fact you've actually attempted all these things. You smoked salmon, you made salmon mousse, you made pasta, you've cooked spinach beautifully, you made a beurre blanc and flavoured it with real gusto. I think it's great. That was really nice, yeah, because it shows they appreciate you trying. I've done my best, so yeah, yeah I've got to say I'm proud of it, yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> Judge Jules is serving salt and pepper squid with wasabi mayonnaise and minced prawns, eggs, chili paste, kale and asparagus tips. It is, by your own admission, of a fusion here. Lots of work done, Jules. I hope it all goes together. I would like a crispier coating on that squid and it's a little greasy. Love the heat, the gentle heat of the wasabi in your mayonnaise. I can see you are as eclectic as your music. I love that little minced prawn, egg, veg bowl, and I was concerned I wasn't going to. There's sweet palm sugar in there, there's heat from chilli coming through. This asparagus is not necessary, but you wanted to make it a bit posh, so that's fair enough. But the squid is a bit greasy. I feel good. I, I was happy with the feedback. I, I don't think you're ever going to get wholly positive comments from Greg and John, but I think under the circumstances, they seem to really like it. Adam has cooked tenderloin of Iberico pork with parsnip three ways, roasted with cumin, pureed, and as a crisp, served with a crispy bacon crumb. 
and a carrot and ginger sauce. I really like the look of your plate. I think it's modern and I think it's bold. Your pork is cooked really, really well. There's not a hint of dryness in there. Beautifully cooked. Your puree is delicious. Creamy, naturally sweet parsnip. Love the salty, crispy bits of bacon. Your sauce is a little too subtle. Your dish is technically faultless, but everything now needs a bit more oomph. It needs some more salt and pepper across the pork. Your sauce needs to be reduced more so it gets more flavour. Just go for it. Feeling pretty good. Could have done with a bit more oomph, which I kind of get. Pork was spot on. So, yeah, overall, I'm happy. Tomasz has made pierogi, Polish dumplings with a wild mushroom filling, sautéed beetroot with apple and sultanas, a creme fraiche and chive dip served with a shot of Polish vodka. Nazdrowia. Nazdrowia. What I really like are those pierogi because the dough is slightly chewy and then inside you've got the rich smokiness of mushrooms with pepper and they've been cooked down really, really well. Your beetroot is sweet with the sultanas and sweet with the apples. I really like it. I like it a lot. Appearance could do with tidying up. That said, that's my only criticism. Your flavours are lovely. Beetroot has an earthy sweetness. You've added apple, giving it a sharp sweetness, and then sultana's giving it a deeper sweetness. I love that with the tartness of the creme fraiche across your beautifully made and brilliantly flavoured pierogi. How do I say good in Polish, do you? Dobrze. Dobrze? Yeah, well, bardzo dobrze. Barza dobrze? Yeah. What's barza? <laughs> Very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ahead Johnson. of myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll just stick with dobrze, shall dobrze. we? Dobrze. I think the compliments were pretty good. The presentation wasn't ideal, but I did fine. Vicky is serving fillet steak on a potato, spring onion and garlic mash with sautéed spinach and pine nuts topped with a peppercorn sauce. Your steak's cooked really nicely. Mashed potato is as smooth as you like. Your spinach is nicely cooked with the pine nuts through it. There's some really nice work here, really nice work here. Thank you. I really like the richness of your sauce. You've got thyme, you've got the ferocious heat of peppercorns as well. I love the richness in that mashed potato. And your steak is really well cooked. I think your flavours are fantastic. I cooked a good steak, and now we wear out a bit of meat. I did some nice smooth mash. If I couldn't do a potato right, I don't think they'd let us back in Newcastle. We like our mash. What are you supposed to do when you've enjoyed every single dish? This is going to come down to some very, very fine margins. I've got one favourite dish, absolutely. Who's that? And that's Kelly. Right. Okay. I think Kelly did amazing. Bur blanc, smoking fish, making cannelloni, making a mousse. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Kelly really pushed herself. I love the smoky salmon and I love the butter sauce. Vicky, by her own admission, hasn't done a great deal of cooking, but I tell you what, what she did present to us today tasted fantastic. I've got to say, I'm really impressed because Vicky made a good sauce, cooked a piece of beef medium rare and made great mashed potato. Tomash. I thought his flavours and textures were lovely. And he made us a plate of pierogi. They were great. The inside packed full of beefy mushroom flavour with lots and lots of pepper. I can taste it now. They were delicious. This means we are discussing now who goes home between Jules and Adam. That's it. I really enjoyed Adam's presentation. I thought it looked great. 
He cooked that pork brilliantly well. He cooked parsnip three ways. The whole dish, as well as it was cooked, it needed more oomph. Look, if it's me, I'll be gutted, but everyone's done so well. I've gone out against four people who've cooked better. So that's it. I've done as well as I can. Jules cooked for us two dishes on a plate. Jules delivered for me wonderful flavours, but the appearance of his plate was a little lacking and the texture of the squid was too greasy. I think I demonstrated that I've got a bit of a kind of eclectic taste and now I just want to demonstrate that I can take it a bit further. This is going to be a really tough decision. I don't know what to do. You five need to know you did really, really well. So well, you made our decision very, very difficult indeed. It has been tough, but we have made a decision. The contestant leaving us is... is Jules. Jules, terribly sorry. The MasterChef experience will be one of life's big memories for the scrapbook. Shame to go home, but I think that everybody cooked very well today. Kim <laughs> Gang, I just can't believe I'm standing here. Yeah, this is like when Lennox Lewis won the world title. <laughs> this is my world title. I'm actually shaking at the moment, you know? I can't believe it. I think I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I'm going to have to step away from the weather map for a bit and start cooking more. I'm a little bit shell-shocked. I'm very excited. I'm feeling a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes! In your face! That was mostly how I was feeling. <laughs> yeah, happy to be here and happy to see what we're going to get up to next. I just hope I don't get paired up with her, because she's nuts. <laughs> <laughs>I've got four little balls now. Don't worry. I can do impossible sometime. And the pressure intensifies. Oh, my God. I crumble, crumble, crumble. A little bit of honey. Oof. Right. <laughs>